everybody it's your girl angie welcome back to kiss my cheeks tv let's get into love and marriage hunchville y'all this was a fast forward episode i probably fast forward through at least three scenes for sure three scenes this season i'm telling you right now i don't see them having a season three one two of the main families of the show don't want to film with each other well one of them don't and then the main family of the show the executive producers the Holtz, they getting divorced and one of them live in atlanta so it ain't called love and marriage huntsville and atlanta moving on i just don't know i don't know how it's going to go for it this season is nothing but a repeat of all the arguments that were had in season one. Like, I'm so tired of hearing about the police getting called on Martell. I'm so tired of hearing about Miss Wanda not liking somebody talking to Mel. It, it's the same arguments every week, just in different scenes. We gonna argue with it. Tisha gonna have a, um, a marriage panel. Let's argue about it there. We gonna have a voter registration. Let's argue about it here. It'd be this. I don't get. To, I hate talking about the same shit over and over again. Like I'm the type of person. If me and you have an argument and we put everything out on the table, I don't want to keep having that same argument. I'm not gonna keep having that same argument with you over and over again. At the end of the argument, we are either going to respectfully agree to disagree and move forward with each other, or if it gets too disrespectful, I. All of them are my age, so they should all be at the same point where I am. I don't I don't like all that stress and that drama. I don't really like to argue. Now, I do like to cuss people out every once in a while, but that's it. I don't want to keep cussing you out every day over the same shit. Let's start the episode. Kimmy is throwing axes with her girl Tessa or Tisa. Now, one thing, Tisa's hair was cute. It looked like... The crochets I get, the longer version, my girl crochets by Benita. I love, I love that hairstyle. I don't really like my crochets that long because I already have a big head. And when my hair is that big, it just makes my head look 10 times bigger. So when I do real long hair, I like it to be like this, braids or silky straight. And when I do really puffy hair, like curly hair, I like it to be short like a bob. But that, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Throwing those axes look fun, but this one nothing but an opportunity for um, Kimmy to tell somebody else about Tisha and her loyalty and what she expects and about Miss Wanda and being over it. I'm over Miss Wanda mouth too. So now let's move on to Tisha and her friend are having a self-defense class and I completely, completely fast forward through the self-defense class. At the end of the class, I heard Tisha being nervous about being invited to another panel. And I'm like, in Hunts Huntsville people, how many panels do you all need to have? <laughs> like, how many times do you all need to go to an empowerment group to learn how to raise your kids and how to be married? Like, if y'all need to have a panel like this every day, some y'all need some more birth control in Huntsville. I, I don't get it. It's only so many different ways somebody can tell you to do some mommy business and... What a, and everybody marriage different, so I don't even know why you listen to everybody about their marriage. And damn, the people I see on Huntsville, the last people I want to be listening to about some marriage advice. But well, let's move on from that. <sighs> Mel has a therapy session. We learn in therapy that Mel has always been a person who likes to stay busy. Even in high school, she was the president of five different clubs. She sang in the choir. She directed the choir. She was always in her sorority event. She still got straight A's. Like Mel has always liked to be a busy person. And that's me. I'm always a person. I don't want to be that busy. Like I do like to um watch a little bit of TV and take a good nap every, <laughs> every now and then. But like me, this quarantine, crazy. Head... It's crazy. Like, I am not a sit-in-the-house type of person. I am someone who likes to be out doing something. I am someone who likes to, like, I'm on the board of my son's football booster club. I like to be in, I'm the type of person, I like to be in charge of stuff. I don't know why. Like, I, I'm a manager at work. I, I like to be in charge. <laughs> a mess. A mess, I know. So, I understand Mel a little bit. Like, I like to stay, like, I'm a person, I always like to work, because I like to have money. 
So, um, they get into her talking about her dad. She didn't meet her dad until she was 16 or she didn't really start talking to him till she was 16. So that was, that's, that would have to be hard on anyone. I, I don't know that story, so I don't want to speak on it. I can't imagine how that is knowing who your dad is, but he not, it's a lot going on with her family dynamics that they really don't want to share and you ain't got to overshare girl and so the counselor tells mel that you being so busy like you are you're making yourself unavailable to your children and when your children get older you may find that they have the same complaints about you that you had for your father not that you're trying to abandon them but by you being so busy you will be unavailable for them and i think that shook mel because she was kind of like all right that's enough that's enough counseling for today i don't need you to read me that deep but i said that was a message that was a really good point i think mel received it and she was like I just can't cry no more. Like, I think Mel received that message, but that was a really good point that you could think, like, you want to work 20 hours a day and you making all this money because you want, and you, everyone wants to give their kids a better life, let them have, you know, not everybody got to have Gucci and stuff, but you want your kids to have some of the finer things and you want them to live in a nice house, have the best education. I understand and sometimes that may require you to work two jobs or if you have a business you really grinding it out with your business but like the therapist said you can't be at both places at both times like it is a balance I don't have the answer I have been there where I've had to work more hours and you know, when my son was younger, had to put him in a daycare or have someone help watch him. And like when I used to do taxes and I had my tax business on the side and I would go out on the weekends and do taxes and it was like, but when are you spending time? Like, I, I get it. I get it. As my son has gotten older, I have been able to manage that better. But that was just the message so now mel and martell are at the house they looking at old dresses and they arguing about that same shit mel you um you too busy when you gonna stay in the house and i said fast forward through this martell doesn't want her to do the play when i stopped the fast forward i heard some mel talking about being a yo-yo and i said this is this segment showed me me <laughs> And I ain't nobody marry who stay who married to you want to. But me, I was like, Mel, please leave him. Because Martel tells Mel, baby, shoot for your dreams. You want to be in plays. You want to do this. You want to do that. Shoot for your dreams. And so then when Mel goes out to live her dream and to get everything she's wanted, now, well, baby, you you going out for your dreams, you shooting for the stars, but you ain't fucking me enough, so let me go fuck on this girl over here for five years. <laughs> and so now, when you get found out, your affair is found out, well, baby, you was too busy for me, but you told me to go out there and live my best life and to make all my dreams come true. Yeah, I told you to do that, but... You got to do that and fuck me when I want. Like, Martel is the type he would have cheated either way. But I don't like how he's using melodies, dreams, and ambitions as an excuse to do what he did. Let's move on from that because that was going to piss me off. Because Mel was like, no, you're not going to yo-yo me. You're not going to tell me to shoot for the stars. And then once I reach the stars, be like, oh, no. You too high, come back down. Come on back down. Let me cheat on you and bring you back down. Cause I really feel like that might be that might be a lot to do with it too. Cause Martel has a huge ego where he might be like, my wife getting 
to be too much. Let me let me have this affair to bring to knock her back down to make her feel like she still ain't shit. Mel, you are the shit. Fuck him. Move on. Okay. So now let's get to this. Um, what is this called? Watch me vote events. I thought it was a great event. I think anytime people want to go around and do voter registration, that's a great thing. I'm happy they put it on TV because we do need to get people registered to vote in November. Period. Okay, so now Kimmy is in her confession. She's talking to Maurice, talking about, I don't know, Destiny and LeBaric last name. I guess I still don't know them. And I'm like, please, please, if y'all have a reunion, I don't want to hear this shit about you not knowing. I don't know their last name either, but you not knowing them. That is some bullshit. Let's move on from that. Kimmy is now talking to Tisha. And... No, Kimmy is now talking about Tisha because this moment was funny. And then Tisha walks in and her son Jalen is like, Mom, Mom, like, shut the fuck up. Tisha is right there behind you. I want some lint in my glasses. So, then they um come in and Tisha got on heels and Kimmy like, why you got on heels, girl? You know we getting ready to walk around and do this voting re registration thing. And so as she's talking to Tisha, Martell calls, and Martell is like, look, you know, I can't be up there around the um, Scots. They called the police on me, and I ain't trying to go to jail. And I'm like, I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm sick of it. So let's fast forward through that. And that's why I wrote cancel the whole show. Because if you have two people that can't film together, one of them has to go. And it will be, I don't think the Holtz will go because it's their show. How they gonna, I mean, but we've seen people who were executive producer leave their show before over there. What is it? Love and marriage. Not love. What is it? Married to medicine. That executive producer got kicked off the show. And what's the other one? They was trying, they trying to get rid of Shawnee, and I hope they get rid of Shawnee, because that ass ain't got no storyline anyway, but this ain't got nothing to do with basketball-wise. Moving on, Marceau and Tisha had a little bit of argument in the car. I don't care nothing about that. They was walking around the neighborhood. Melanie looked good, because I liked her little outfit with the gray skirt with the t-shirt, because I got a little gray skirt like that, and I said, I might put that together. Um, Kimmy and Wanda have a conversation. They started out real fake and phony. Thank you for coming, girl. Yeah, you know, I um I got you together a little bit. Yeah, like my mama, but we we get each other together and then we hug it out and then okay. And then they got into um Wanda says, Well, it's two kind of people. I don't deal with Kimmy. I don't deal with fake people and I don't deal with no, I don't deal with fake friends and I don't deal with shady people. And I'm like, who <laughs> I'm like, Kimmy, she reading you a little bit. And then Wanda's like, look, the only thing I have a problem with is I don't like the whispers. I don't like when people, when you get all in the corner talking to Mel in the corner and y'all whispering. And I'm like, Wanda, when have you ever been around them and you seen them whisper? I said, this is what the whole thing is with Miss Wanda. Tisha is non-confrontational very um soft-minded the things that tisha wants to get in mel's face about like that she can't because she know melody will read her down she know mel will not back down so she needs a bark dog a guard dog to bark at people for her because this all sounds like something that tisha said talking about I don't want you talking about my baby to Melanie. And she's like, when would I ever be talking about Tisha to Mel? It sounds like Tisha is the one like, mama, every time we go to an event, Kimmy is always in the corner whispering to Mel. I know they talking about me. That, and she gassing up her mama to go bark at Mel, to go bark at Kimmy, because she don't know how to say the stuff herself, or she too scary to say the stuff herself. That's why she want people to be loyal to her and to have her back. And this is not motherfucking second grade. That's some little shit my little niece would do talking about, you can't talk to her, you my friend. Like, that's, that's what little element elementary kids do that. 
Let's move on because that shit had pissed me off. And I said, Tisha, you gonna get your mom, you gonna get your mama to walk up on the right one who not gonna give a fuck that she your mama. Right now, you have good friends who respect the fact that Miss Wanda is your mother. Because like I told you, you said Miss Wanda already had you at a young age. So that means Miss Wanda is young enough to get cussed out. You just have people who respect you enough not to cuss her out because she your mama. Now let's get over to Mel and Tisha. They talking more about this police report. I don't give a damn about nothing like that. And so now they talking about Marceau line and Mel is like you ain't never caught Marceau in no lie and she was like no nah, I ain't never caught Marceau in no lie and Mel was like I didn't caught Marceau in a lie and she's like well tell me a lie you heard my husband tell and I said Tisha I done only been watching this show for two seasons and I didn't caught Marceau in a lie looking at the TV so because Tisha's like I've been married for 13 years and my husband has never lied to me I ain't never caught him in no lie I said okay for right now but it looked like the shit about to blow in your face let's move on because I can't stand I can't stand this shit is let's move on because we ain't got to make this long Melanie's sister we get to meet a new character her sister Shalon I really liked her hair it reminds me of my sis my sister's hair and she didn't meet her sister until she was 19 years old. They had a rocky relationship. Shalon stated that, well, when they met, she was just coming off drugs. So she really wasn't trying to have a family reunion right now. She was trying to get herself together. I understand that. I understand the strain. But I'm happy. It looks like they cool now. Shalon was upset. She was like, well, you invited Marcus to the baby shower and you didn't invite me. Melanie, you could have invited Shalon to the baby shower. You invited her over your house. Why she couldn't come to the shower? Let's move on from that. It looks like they have the ability to have a great relationship moving forward. So, Marceau was gone for three days. Tisha in her house complaining about being a single mother. My husband gone Texas for three days and I got to do everything for these kids. And I'm like, why the fuck do y'all have kids? Because every time either one of y'all get together and have to do some shit solo, you act like it's the end of the fucking world. <laughs> Marceau is guilting Tisha, telling her that she's doing too much and that he feels alone. And I said, no. And now Tisha is crying to her friends about, or her friend, whoever this girl is from the episode. You know when a man tell you that he feel alone, that mean he getting ready to have an affair. And I said, girl, this ain't nothing but manipulation. This is nothing but manipulation. Marceau wants you to think that he's alone, that you're not doing your duties, that he's not being satisfied, so that you can stop doing what you're doing because all he really wants he don't give a fuck about fucking you he wants you to be in the house with them kids he tired of as he says babysit he tired of babysitting his own kids he tired of getting them food he tired of sitting in the school line to pick them up and drop them off <laughs> he ain't alone he just tired of doing the shit he wants you to do the friend is giving her all kinds of advice she was like girl marceau is dropping you hints you need to take care of your man because if he telling you he alone that's the space you don't want him to be be in because somebody else will feel it and i'm like girl that is true but just because that's what your ex-husband did that does not mean what marceau did is going to do but i believe marceau has already done it like i said i feel like Tisha is dropping all these things. So, oh, I think um, cheating is in a deal breaker. Oh, Marceau is alone. I feel like the affair is coming. I feel like it's some shit that is getting ready to come out about Marceau or that Tisha knows it and she just is saying, I'm laying the groundwork in case it does come out. I don't know, but the episode went off. And next week looks like it's going to be good. Next week looks like a lot of drama, but at least it's new drama. It looks like Marceau, oh, at some point, Marceau tells Tisha next week, well, you know you from the other side of the tracks. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's some bullshit to tell your wife. Anyway, get in the comments. Let me know what y'all thought about the episode this week. 
Um, I'm looking forward to next week because at least it'll be some fresh drama because I'm tired of hearing Miss Wanda talking about who talking to Mel. I'm tired of hearing about this police report. I'm tired of hearing about somebody mom having a sex tape. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Anything that have to do with season one, I'm tired of hearing about it. All right, y'all. Like, comment, share. I will talk to y'all later. Bye.